So here we have another Richard Legrand watch, or now officially known as RLG. And this is the latest Odyssey and the first watch with the new logo. I'm not sure what version this actually is supposed to be. I think Mark IV maybe, but these are currently available on the website, even though they say they are up for pre-order. This watch is much improved over the original Odyssey I reviewed many years ago, and this is going to be a quick video to give you a good look at this piece and talk about some of my favorite aspects of it. Let's get to it. I went ahead and I looked up my 2018 review of the Odyssey, and looking back at that watch and this new version, the price has gone up, but one thing for certain is the watch has definitely been refined. The price is now $429 versus $299, but you're getting a Miyota 9039 movement versus the original's NH35, and the bracelet, the bezel insert, and just the overall finishing has really been upgraded, so I can understand the price increase. In almost all ways, this is a much better watch than the first one I reviewed. Now, the packaging is much like the Ocean Fair I reviewed a few months ago. You get a lot of the packaging and boxes here, the leather pouch, a bunch of tools and extra spring bars. They're all of questionable quality. Let's face it, they're Chinese made. I don't mean that to be a knock. But when you get all of this with a watch that costs a little over $400, don't expect great tools. It's nice that they include it though, especially if this is someone's first watch, you know, and they don't have a lot of these tools available, but it is what it is. Also included is a, I'll say decent quality Tropic rubber strap, but it does have a nice signed buckle. The watch itself, it's been sized down to 39 millimeters. The original one was 41 millimeters. And as I've said, I'm not really sure what version of the watch this is. I think it is the fourth version, uh, <laughs> fourth version, we'll leave that alone. And as I've talked about recently, this seems to be the growing or shrinking trend, if you will, of many micro brands doing watches under 40 millimeters. On screen, you will see pictures of the full specifications of this Odyssey diver. And the only thing I will add is the weight. Uh, it seems for some reason, most do not include the weight of the piece, which I know many people do consider when purchasing a watch. On an unsized bracelet, it weighs 157 grams. And if that's a little too heavy, uh, too heavy for you, remember that there is a rubber strap as well, which will greatly reduce the weight. For the most part, I would say the dial is unchanged, at least in design. Uh, everything looks a little crisper, better applied, better printed, and the sunray pattern blue dial here is a brighter blue. It's more robust and more striking, in my opinion. The sapphire crystal, on the other hand, it's like the sapphire crystal and dial combo produces a good amount of glare and reflection, something you could see throughout this video. Moving around to the case, this is a very well finished case for its price point. Mostly brushed, you got some thin high polished chamfers on the top sides of the case. That also makes its way to the new bracelet. The crown does look small, but it's easy to grip and uh, easy to use with my medium large hands. The stem is solid, but as you can see here, my example does have a noticeable wobble on the crown. The large coin edge bezel, it's, it's fantastic. You can grip it at any angle and it's a pleasure to rotate, it has satisfying clicks, and there is zero play. I mean zero. The sapphire bezel insert is domed and uh, though I'm not always the biggest fan of sapphire inserts, I think it works well here. Moving on to the case back and bracelet. The case back is pretty similar to the original and the artwork is definitely the same on the Ocean Fair that I reviewed. Though this case back is less adorned than the Ocean Fair, and it has a uh, smaller helmet and anchor logo, and just simple brushed steel surrounding it. The bracelet is definitely improvement, I'm sure. Well, if you're new here, you don't remember it, but anybody who was around back in 2018 remembers I was really not a fan of this bracelet. It's still a pin and collar system, but I had no issue to remove links, and the bracelet tapers towards the clasp. We've seen this clasp on other micros. It's good quality and looks like it could be on a more expensive watch, but like many micro dive watches these days, it doesn't, it doesn't have a dive extension, it doesn't have a safety latch. And if I really want to nitpick, 
I wish the sides of the bracelet were brushed and not polished to match the sides of the case. This watch is very similar to many other vintage inspired pieces and it fits like a 39 millimeter watch. I think it looks okay on my seven and a half inch wrist, but I still might prefer the original 41 millimeter size. I will say all the edges of the case bracelet, the case back, they all feel smooth on my wrist. And this feels like a comfortable watch to wear for long periods of time. The loom is pretty good, but it's, you know, it's nothing to write home about if I'm being honest. It's not the best or the worst I've seen at this price point. I kind of put it in the middle of other micro brands in a similar style. If you're a loom junkie, I don't think you'll hate this, but it's not Seiko loom, which is, you know, still the, you know, the top bar there. So know that going in. You know, getting to the summary here, I have to say, I can easily say RLG has stepped up the game from the original versions, and I do prefer this new Odyssey to the Ocean Fair I reviewed recently as well. It, you know, they're very similar watches. I feel if you're going to get one RLG watch, this would be it, at least for, you know, my money. And in, uh, you know, overall looks, finishing, overall quality, this is a better watch. At the end of the day, this is another Chinese micro. You know, many are. Many of the watches I review are Chinese micros, and that's okay. But there are countless similar watches out there to this one. We all know that. I think this is a nice example, and I like how RLG has continuously improved over the years. As always, all the links will be in the description, including a link to the RLG website. Other colors of this model are available as well, so you can check that out. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please like, share, and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You'll never miss another watch report review, and it really helps out the channel. We have some great watch reviews coming up this summer, including a new one from RZE, a prototype from Duzu, a new Titoni C-Scoper, and look for a Topper's exclusive Zodiac Seawolf GMT very soon. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.